Hello, today we're going to look at the multi-stage dividend growth model together. We're going to go through both a brief discussion about the theoretical model, but also we, more importantly we're going to go through how practically we can apply this model using information from uh, information systems such as uh, Bloomberg. Okay, let's look at the theoretical model. It was the dividend growth model was originated by the Mayor Gordons. The basic idea is this: the of it's built on the cash flow discount model. So the idea it is if we have a stream of cash flow, and if we know the cost of capital to discount at for those uh, cash flow you receive and a constant growth rate this model will give you the present value of this stream of cash you're going to receive so in this instant cash you receive is from the dividend paid by the company G is the growth rate that the dividend growth K is the cost of equity in other words, the required rate of returns for the shareholders who are actually investing in this company and in exchange they receive this string of cash flow. And the simplistic model is the constant growth model that you have constant growth uh, and with the next period of the dividends here we can actually instantly get a present value for this string of dividends. Of course, in real world it's a bit more complicated. We will have more than one uh, gr growth rate. Um, so we will have a different stage growth possibly if in between here to the end. Um, also, we, we we would like to see possibly um, the calculation will end at certain point that it is will go the growth rate will be constant and that what we call the holding period like the end of the period that at that point that price will be calculated based on the constant growth model um, and most of the variations that people apply the con the dividend discount model will be how they actually work on this part that is not constant growth and what are the assumptions based on um, you, you calculating this um, cash flow. So looking at this theoretical model it's uh, the key input will be this stream of cash flow how you're going to estimate them and what are the costs of capital you're going to you also need estimations. Um, just a if we move on to more practical applications, what do we do? So we actually try to apply the dividend discount model to estimate the intrinsic value. In other words, the, the so-called true value, which is normally unobservable. Um, so we want to use the, mainly the present value of forecast dividends as, as the method. So it, it's the cash flow discount model. The important step will be to calculate uh, a stream of earnings and and of course to calculate a stream of future earnings the best starting point normally is start from the analyst forecast if you can have access to those informations so in system like Bloomberg they will have like one to five years forecast and for most, at least, they will have two years forecast. Uh, so we will use the two years forecast to start with. And then, of course, the most important and spec spec <laughs> speculative uh, estimation, it is the long-term growth rate, which is um, can change the value quite significantly. Um, 
So let's look at the assumption one by one. So we assume a company actually not have a constant growth but have multi-stage growth. Uh, in practice, normally we will assume about three stage. What is the growth stage? The second one is transition stage and the final stage will be the mature or steady state where you have constant growth. Um, there's one more stage in the system like Bloomberg, they actually because they have forecast from analysts and normally analysts forecast in a very short term they are not far off at least I mean although the company will will beat or, or actually miss the estimate it won't be too far off and therefore you will like to use the forecast to, as a starting point uh, and then build on that to the next stage like the growth transitional and mature so in calculation they're actually four stage so what is what do we think about growth stage what we need to worry about of course we want to know for how long and what they uh, for how long this growth stage will last and and what are the growth rate so the first year of the growth stage uh, normally if you have forecast you will use forecast uh, and then calculate the forecast growth. In, if there isn't one, then you will use this, like the rest of the growth year, it will be determined by the so-called long-term growth rate. Where this long-term growth rate come from is a big question. You can either use historical data of this company to calculate the historical long-term growth, or you can use all the analyst forecasts uh, for the futures and then give it a average and that's what actually Boomer did use all the analyst forecast to to calculate the long-term growth um, in terms of the time period um, of, of the growth stage we, we're going to talk about this later on uh, because different company will at different stage of their growth and they have different growth type if they actually uh, currently have a high growth possibly the high growth will last shorter than if you currently just have a low growth uh, in terms of the speed so we will we, we'll look at those separation of the year by looking at the growth type but basically in the growth stage the growth rate will be quite high compared to any other stage um, and uh, the calculation it is based on either analyst forecast or your historical estimations or your own analysis in other words possibly it's your own guess the, the growth rate default in, in Bloomberg is the mean secular growth rate which is by the, ad, the ad analyst estimate what is in the transitional transition stage? Transition stage is like from growth to mature stage. And these transitions uh, normally you will assume that the growth rate change will converge to uh, like the general markets for all mature issues. In, in other words, whether you are high growth or low growth firm, you will eventually converge to the average market like mature firm so the average market mature firm what would they look like uh, in Bloomberg they assume that okay uh, th this type of company will have 45% uh, uh, of payout ratios and the growth rate we're actually going to talk about it in the next stage in the mature stage will we, we'll, will be calculated but what this transition stage is you, you will assume that firms are gradually moving towards that mature stage so the both the growth rate and payout ratio are changing uh, uh, in the linear function fashions towards from the growth stage to towards the mature stage so let's look at the mature stage what are the uh, 
kind of uh, constant growth stage looks like. Um, the payout ratio, as we said, is like 45%, but of course each country will be different. We're actually going to show you then there's some statistics in later on. Um, and the, the growth rate is an interesting, interesting one. The growth rate uh, to determine the long-term growth rate is what we want to do is like using the sustainable growth rate we, we learned from uh, some lectures before. What it is is the return on equity times the retain ratio. In other words, uh, the ROE times 1 minus the payout ratio is the long-term growth rate. And here, instead of using the ROE, you're using the market required rate of return. Uh, in other words, the long-term bond plus the risk premium. That will be the required rate of return for the market. And then you times uh, the 1 minus this uh, payout ratio that will give you the sustainable growth rate. Uh, and, and that will be the long-term growth rate. And every company, when they reach to this mature stage, they will have the same uh, level of growth rate. Of course, you can always modify all these numbers. So we said we're going to look at what the growth rate looks like, um, the, the growth stage looks like when um, they are in different stages. So in Bloomberg, uh, this is how they assume for we have four types of growth uh, companies and each type have four stage the forecast by the analyst and then the growth stage the transition stage and the mature stage and this is the number give you the number of years that they assume each company actually stay in that stage for example for explosive growth type firm the forecast always start with two years and then growth they will have a shorter number of growth year because exposure a very high let's say 70 80 percent growth a year and then they will have, take longer time to actually uh, gradually decline to the mature stage so you, you can see the sum of the growth and transitional year is the same for all of this type is like 17 year for higher growth you you will have slightly longer uh, periods but then as, as the speed actually declined then the, the growth period actually taking longer so this is kind of my more smoother type of growth versus more uh, explosive type of growth yeah and the time it takes to converge to the material are relatively shorter for this. These are just a general assumption. Every firm may have their different trajectory, of course, or at different time points. So you need to use this as a guideline to actually change your own assumption. But in Bloomberg, they will automatically allocate company uh, based on their current growth rate. We'll look at that later on. Um, so these are the different uh, type and different stage. How are the growth rate determined in different stage? Of, as we previously discussed, is that of course the payout ratio and the growth rate are forecast in the forecast year. In the growth rate, growth year, the mean secular growth rate is used for this whatever long time period. Uh, for the giving them payout is the same as the forecast one uh, when we during this growth year we're assuming they do not change their payout ratio much um, and then for the transition year it's an interesting one because it's actually coming from it's a linear change from this growth rate to that the mature growth rate okay um, so what we want to see is okay what is the mature growth rate as we said is the uh, um, market risk premiums times 
one minus the payout ratio and the payout mature payout ratio actually it is 45 percent so let's see some example of how actually Bloomberg actually allocate the company into different growth type you, you may have a poll you can pause this video and think about it before I start showing the outcome okay Facebook it is in a higher growth uh, stage uh, Amazon also high growth Netflix high growth as well Google actually is an average Apple is also in average growth and Microsoft is in the slow growth area you may actually disagree with this allocations but what it's important it is how you can actually justify what you think it is by maybe looking at further fundamental analysis the other question you we need to find out of course we what we discussed just then is just looking at uh, the cash flow so it's a numerator how about the denominator the discount rate discount rate is the cost of equity so the estimation is used uh, capital asset pricing models as a base so here you need to find out the risk fee rates normally it's like 10 year cherry bond plus risk premium and how to calculate the risk premium the risk premium is calculated based on each country um, uh, so kind of equity risk premium times this particular issue uh, beta country risk premium then is need to be calculated is mainly used uh, all the uh, value weighted dividends and the expected growth rate to calculate that com country's market returns on equity and then add on to the risk fee rate that sorry the risk fee rate is subject from from that risk premium from from that uh, country risk country return to get the country risk premium so here this is all the basic discussions let's move on to demonstrations in the next video